Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations everybody, we're nearing kind of the end of this investigation period. Oh, what a shame. Why is it playing this music? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a very evil person. <laughs> <laughs> the pigeons, they fear him. Apparently, wow. So, we went to Tender Lender last time. So, we gotta go to the computer blue screen. Blue screens, ink. Oh, yeah. This is gonna be interesting. I wanna see who's there. It looks literally like that scene from Star Wars Episode Two, where Obi-Wan walks in from the rain, and there's everything white, and they're like, come sit in this chair, and it's like, whoa. It's like the spoon. Yeah, it's like the spoon. That's literally what this looks like. Or maybe something from, like, Star Trek. Let's you haven't shirts. seen Star Trek. No, but you know how there's, like, the guys with the, uh, this is gonna be a very bad uh, stereotype, uh, the guy with the black hair, and he's got the blue shirt, and he's like, ugh. Th that guy. No, I looks, haven't seen Star The guy on the right either. looks like that. They're all wearing blue shirts. Okay, but our dad had Pez dispensers of them. You don't remember what they look don't like Don't they wear all? red shirts? No, one of them wears a red shirt, one wears a yellow shirt, and one wears a blue shirt. Like, like the Wiggles. Think of it like that. Star Trek <laughs> equals the Wiggles, apparently. You heard it here first, folks. January 7th, Blue Screens, Inc. Wow, this place is so high tech. You can almost smell the electricity in the air. It is a computer firm, Maya. They can't work without electricity, you know. Uh, who are you? Is that me? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Is that a literal robot? <laughs> I, I can't. Can I just point out that her, her reaction to literally every new character is just like a. <laughs> this they is look, so ridiculous. They look so weird. That's why Phoenix Wright characters. Every time you see it, it's like, is it gonna be like a weird guy slash girl who's French? Is it gonna be a robot? Didn't you laugh about be... Ma Maggie Bird as well? <laughs> No, I laughed once I realized it was Maggie Bird. No, I like, I when I first saw her, I was like, oh, okay. And then I realized you were like, Didn't you laugh Maggie about Bird. Desiree Delight? She looks normal. <laughs> I don't know if I laughed about Desiree Delight. I don't think so. Every character in this pretty case. Pretty much every have. character every character in this case. Because they're hilarious! Even not even Violetta, she's not that. I was like, ha, ha, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for voice. I laugh a lot. Oh, um, hello. I gotta figure- I, yeah, th this is a robot. I'm sorry. Access is restricted to authorized personnel only. This is a computer programming laboratory. There are far too many trade secrets that could be leaked. Whoa! What secrets?! Everything you see here is classified. No information can leave this building. Understood! Who is this woman? She's like a robot from some kind of whacked edumational show. My name is Lisa- Lisa Basil?! That's a terrible name. Basil? I don't know. What, that's a weird last name. Do we know people with the last name of Basil? We might. <laughs> Do we? You know? just insulted literally everyone with the name or last okay, name of Basil you know, or Basil. You know why I say this? It's because I don't like Basil. On food that's and weird. stuff. Also, much like Lisa Glenn Basil. Elg, her name is a palindrome. What? Glenn Elg's name is a palindrome, so is Lisa Basil. Palindrome. Same, it's the same spelled forwards and backwards. Oh! Oh, that's kind of cool. It's like Taco Cat. Spelled backwards is Taco Cat. But better Cat. than that. But better than that. I'm the company director. D director? Sh she's human? She seems more like a ghost in a shell. And that fiend over her eye, isn't that the same device as Glen Elg's? That's a DMH, right? Nice try, but it's the other way around, Maya. It's an HMD. All of the programmers here at Blue Screens Incorporated are supplied with HMDs. Then do you write programs too? No, I just enjoy wearing this. They are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind one. This is ba your voice here is basically robotic Penny. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, it's somebody who's important, but it's also somebody who's basically a robot. Her, either she is a robot or she has a dress that lights up like Miss Frizzle. Wah, 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 Wahoo! <laughs> Those pillars almost look like they're moving. It's kind of unsettling. Nah, they just look a bit twisted or warped or whatever word I'm looking for. This office was designed with a futuristic feel in mind. Futuristic? Yes, we try to imagine what things might look like in the future when we designed it. It helps to soothe and calm the soul. 
On second thought, I agree with you, Nick. This place is really unsettling. <laughs> it's also playing the music that plays for both Ben the Ventriloquist and Director Hardy. <laughs> it is? Yep. Oh yeah, it is actually, because it had the du -du -du. Yeah, that music. Hey, look, Nick! It's a supercomputer! It looks like it's really smart and wise, doesn't it? Computers are only as smart as the humans who use them, Maya. That explains why we don't use the computer in our office. You work there too, Maya. Yeah, but at least I'm... Please, don't argue about something that's so trivial. Otherwise, the computer will laugh at you. She said that it'd laugh at us, Nick. She said she'd laugh she at us. She said she'd laugh at us, Nick. She's a human, Maya, not a computer. Oh. I mean, I didn't... I wasn't sure at first. Hey, dude. He's really pounding that keyboard, isn't he? It's like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, he's, maybe he's playing Frogger. <laughs> Are, do you assume that programmers just play games? No, no. Isn't it? I'm saying this because in the police department, it's like, oh, what they're doing on the computer, it's like, <gasps> oh, we <laughs> Princess Baby! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, maybe... <laughs> wow! I bet that's where the pro and programmer comes from, huh? I guess I shouldn't be resting on my laurels. Laurels. Laurels! Gotta expand my skill set and all that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I could become an old old CD's apprentice. Um, and what about your spirit medium training? Eh. Maya really hasn't been looking at it anyway. Wait, is this the same thing? Oh wow. man, they're all really pounding at the computer. Yeah. Are, are there two or three guys here? Two. Uh, wait. There could be a head behind that guy. Though. Well, don't ask me. I'm the one with bad eyes. Why hey, look, there... it's a horse. <laughs> Whoa! Look at the desk, Nick! What a mess! Looks pretty average to me. But you can't get any work done with everything all over the place like this. You think? Real whiz kids can work under any condition, you know. Mm. She's trying to hint that I should tidy my desk more. I'll clean up my desk when Maya stops asking silly questions. No hurry, then. <laughs> hey! This calendar. What about it? If it is another hint about tidying, you can forget it. Someone's marked December 3rd in red pen. December 3rd? That's the day Mr. Elg was murdered! Is there anything else? Yeah. Um, it says, meet with the tiger. The t tiger Glenn's calendar added to the court record. Okay. Pretty big Why, Okay, there. what is with all of the cords on the ground? I feel like that's such a hazard. Especially for me. Don't trip over them. No, but I'm the person who I'll be, like, walking in the room, and I, I feel like more times... I feel like a couple times you've been playing the N64 and I've like walked into the room and tripped over the cord and like the game stopped. Oh, oh my god, Marty. Okay, Marty, take a look at this. So you've, <clears> there's like the blue thing under there and then the thing sticking out there, which is- Right. A, uh, it looks like a giant foot. <laughs> like, like a leg. Or like, Ugh. that's the leg, that's the end of the foot, but it's not. That's. But it's not. I thought it was the biggest ch chair. Wow, look at this mess! Looks like they're all betting tickets. What kind of betting tickets? For betting on which horse will win a given race. They're horse racing tickets. Oh, wow. His drawers are stuffed full of these. Looks like they're all losing tickets, though. Glen Elg's losing horse race tickets gathered up. Clearly, he wasn't me playing Harvest Moon 64. Oh my gosh. I know how to you never lose. You just cheat, though. The way to uh, never lose is to just bet on every horse. <laughs> Apparently. If you're <laughs> and, rich. And then trick them into taking your... Not taking your money, money, but still keeping but still your bets. Still keeping your bets. <laughs> this many tickets would get you what? A buck down at the recycling center? You're hopeless, Nick. You know that? I'm just taking them as evidence, Maya. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so, what exactly is the firm's business? I will try to simplify it so that you can understand. We analyze the data management systems required by certain branches of the industry. And deliver optimum... Uh, optimum? Operating system and source level components. That is just hard to say. Huh? You lost me on the corner of the analyze and management? Thank you, Maya. Whenever people start talking about stuff I don't understand, I'm just like, huh? <laughs> and for SRM, I'm like, I know I'm officially a nerd when I understand exactly what the company does. Nope. I don't, like, you're a computer. Like, that's like your thing. In even simpler terms, they basically make, f like, giant programs or frameworks that other companies use. They basically okay. make... Software for other software for other companies, for other software companies. Okay, okay. Doesn't matter. They analyze stuff. You got that much right. And and 
basically like they'll have their software they send out to different companies to use and then they monitor the software and it's like oh they're encountering errors we need to fix that and send some people out to like fix over that. wi-fi or is it wi-fi like... yeah okay they can do it wirelessly that's kind of cool the software we produce is distributed on cds or distributed i always say this wrong distributed not distributed that's bad <laughs> cds <laughs> yes compact disc digital optical sto- storage media oh that's what it stands for I just learned compact that. disc, yeah. No, but compact disc media, whatever it was. CD-ROM. CD-ROM. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize that's what it stood for. Now you know. Now I know. Of course, CDs are used for software as well as music. <gasps> Wait, what if like Glenn Elg is like, oh, I'm really sick of being a programmer. I'm gonna like be rebellious, and then he goes and tries to make music like with a computer, <laughs> and then that's why like. And that's oh, how MC Bomber came into play. Yeah, it's yeah, my maybe, new band. Yeah, just starring me and my computer. Sure. <laughs> well, but nowadays, like with computers, even if you don't know like music super well, like people who would normally never be in the music industry are like, oh yeah, I'm good with computers. I could make music, like, electronic music I, on my I computer. I got a free, a free version of FL Studio, which lets you make music. I want to try that out. Yeah, you should do it. It's a small firm, but all of my employees are first-class pro- programmers. Let's ask one of them what they're doing. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? I cannot confirm that is not what everybody looks like in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he look like such a boss? I'm researching the impact of time slicing common areas of multi threaded code on logical access to storage of these global variables. Obviously, program structure heavily influences response time and performance, so the code interdependence of the global variables and memory overrides are virtually su- uh, important for the success Well, you get of the it. idea. This is the sort of thing we're involved in. Did did you good people follow all of that? I did. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. Your blank smile just said otherwise, Maya. I just realized this chick literally looks like she hopped out of Lazy Town. With that hair. What? <laughs> do you remember Lazy Town? I do. I like remember the, the weird the pirate song. And the do girl what with you the want pink hair, and she's like, buh, 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 and they dance she had around. Pink hair, she had pink hair, yeah. And then so there's the guy with pink. the. Yeah, but if it was. That's like Otherwise... the default female me hairdo. Like, how it comes down to hair. And... Buh, 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 buh. Yep. That was a beautiful rendition of the, <laughs> 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 the Me Channel buh, music. You know about what happened, right, Miss Basil? Hire me smooth in the groove. You, you mean about Glenn being poisoned? Yes, I know. It's terrible. Can you tell us anything that might be helpful? I don't think so. A police officer was here earlier, too. But I couldn't tell him anything out either because... The waitress who committed the crime had absolutely nothing to do with Blue Screens Incorporated. That would make sense. She'd be one of the last people working here, I feel like. <laughs> given, like, given her track record of just screwing things up, they wouldn't be like, Let's hire you for our software company. Nope. Maggie's also not a software person. No, but she'd be one of the last Requires a lot there. of schooling. Oh. How about Mr. Elg's desk? Have you cleared it out any already? No, not yet. It's this one right in front of you. If there's anything that might be useful to you, you are welcome to take it. Really? For free? Really? Oh my gosh. Let's take all the horse racing tickets, take bring them back in time with the sports almanac. <laughs> <laughs> like Back to the Future 2? <laughs> no, like another time traveling movie about a sports almanac being brought back. Yes, Back to the okay, Future 2. Okay, I was like, <laughs> that's what I thought. I guess there might be a clue here somewhere. Yeah, we found it. Oh, 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 yes. If you present the uh, irrelevant evidence to her, it's the best. Um, would you mind taking a look at this? I'm sorry, that data is super admin restricted table- uh, desktop access password protected. Super admin res- uh, restricted desktop access password protected? What? This is madness! No, Maya, that is Sparta. She won't tell us unless we say the right code word. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, I don't understand. Oh, there's like the movie where like, with the famous line, like, This is madness to go- oh. This is Sparta! What movie is that? I don't remember. I've literally never heard of that before. It's funny. I'm sure if you know the movie, it's really funny. Oh. But... A code word? Hmm. Sesame! If it's not Sesame, then it must be her mother's maiden name. That's how it always is. There's no point in having a password if it's always the same thing, Maya. I guess she just doesn't want to talk about this. Maybe we should focus on asking about Glen Elk. What do you say? Yeah, I think she says that to literally everything, so... Oh, hang on. Lisa Basil. Who knows <laughs> how old she She's is? She's a robot. 
That's why. <laughs> D stink face. 42. Maya's 19 now, apparently? Yeah. We, we went over this in the I last forgot, case. I forgot. <laughs> um, about Mr. Elg. He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. But he did suffer from one or two bugs in his personality. Oh? Uh, like what? He was a bit of a loser. Perhaps that would be the best way to describe it. Hey, it's, it's hard to have a social life when you're a programmer and an introvert. I mean, if you're an introvert and a programmer, yeah. If you're, maybe maybe there not. Are, there are a few extrovert programmers. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah. It's not exactly something that it appeals That wouldn't to be something I would be into, no. That's what got him into trouble. What's the matter? He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. So he was really no trouble at all. A model employee. Hey, wait a minute! Just now you said something about him being in trouble! We've gotta find out what this trouble was exactly. T did he spend all of the company's money? Oh, think my friends, how can any pool table ever hope to compare the gold <laughs> the trouble was? <laughs> wow! I forgot about all those lyrics until just now. Oh, they're burned in your mind. And brain. now they. Yeah. yeah. I hated Music that show. Man. Um, <gasps> about Mr. Elg, was he in some kind of trouble? I'm sorry, why would you think that? I thought you said something about it just now. You said he got himself into trouble Psych because walk. he was a bit of a loser. There, yep, I was right. Neek. Really? A psycholock? Only that many. This is a company! <laughs> I would expect, like, five if it's a company secret where literally the first thing she says when we walk in is, Our company's full of secrets! We won't share them! And then she's like, eh, three But she's a bit of a gossip. <laughs> Gossip in the programming, in the programming wing, <laughs> programming I doubt Programming gossip is really stupid, <laughs> I heard that so and so- Did you hear this guy only can type at 65 <laughs> words a minute instead of 70? <laughs> that's what I was literally going to say was typing, because I'm like, I don't know anything about programming. Did you know that the beast, beast hates birds, birds for some <laughs> reason? I guess Mr. Elg is like every other man with his own pile of secrets. Okay, well, we can't break it, pretty much. You think we can? <laughs> I know we can't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> be, 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 be. Wait, where are we going? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we have to talk to Maggie. <laughs> Shoot, I forgot what I was going to do for her voice. It's fine. You've changed her voice <laughs> literally every time she's been on screen. <laughs> This is, <laughs> this is counting the second game, too, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, Maggie, because I didn't think she was going to come back, I was like, whatever, it's the first case. Like, whatever. She, Give her she's a voice. forgettable. And, and she's forgettable, exactly. And then I was like, oh, gosh darn it. <laughs> now I have to do her voice again. Just make her a chain smoke. <laughs> it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Wright. Hello, Maggie. So they finished questioning you? Uh, wasn't it just unbelievable in court today, sir? I'm going to stay up all night and blog about everything that happened. Weren't you scared? It was pretty touch and go in there. Yeah, but you totally nailed that old man. Well, he was all over the place with his testimony. He's not the only one. Huh? What do you mean? Everyone else's testimonies don't match up either. Not with what I remember of the incident, anyway. Is it possible she's the one misremembering things? That could very well be. And we're get, we get the case two prison music. Sad music. Aw, Maggie, it'll be okay. Maggie, you know how you said that everyone else provided testimony that didn't match up with what you remembered? Yep, there are just so many things that don't seem to add up. The biggest contradiction is the other guy I saw at the victim's table. I wonder who that could be. <laughs> Here's the thing. It, there, now that it was like, oh, calendar, meet up with this guy. Let's eat. And this would totally be the dude like, Oh yeah, I, w I want you to order the most expensive food. I can't talk in his voice. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> was... <laughs> Without completely ruining... Okay, no, that actually voice. sounded like a different character and I'm trying to remember... Oh yeah, that... <laughs> that's really good. What's that voice? <laughs> Ermager. <laughs> I don't know. Ah. <laughs> he was the one that slipped something into the victim's coffee. I'm sure it was him. But didn't Mr. Kudo testify earlier today that it was the waitress who put some white powder into the coffee cup? Maybe, maybe, um, the chick who, uh, is helping run the, the business, the tender lender. Maybe Violetta. Violetta. Maybe she is a part-time, like, hip, hypnotizer. And then she <laughs> hypnotized Maggie 
and being like, yep, this is what's happening. Then she like took her clothes, put on the waitress outfit, did the thing, poisoned it, and then set up everything. Because then they were like, old man, get out of here. And he's like, rah, rah, well, and ran off. It, and they, okay, I'm just going to point this out. She didn't take Maggie's clothes when she was passed out. Okay, because yeah. we proved that in court. Because Victor Kuda's like, I wouldn't remember that disgusting like, waitress <laughs> <for> in <the> April. <laughs> That's true. If that is the case. Yeah. Well, he's not the only thing that disappeared. The CD vanished as well. You know, the CD with the writing on it. Oh yeah! The MC Screwdriver album, right? It was MC Bomber, Maya. That name was scrawled on the sports paper as well. They never did find that CD at the crime scene, sir. Or the victim's medication. That's gone missing, too. Ouch, my head. This is getting way too complicated for me. Not as complicated as some other incidents. Like the boat, Rise from the ashes. <laughs> or the boat one. With you it. made that complicated. <laughs> I didn't think it would be... What happened still was complicated. Oh yeah, I heard this bang through my headphones that were blasted to full volume. Which, but, oh. but only when I was over here. <laughs> and then... That was ridiculous. That was one thing. That, no, but there were other <laughs> things too. Oh yeah, well, then I, sh I shot the person, but he just jumped off the boat and swam back to his, sh his boat. And then Von Karma came up in a Gordy costume and, shot and him. ate the guy. No, not <laughs> ate him. You said that you passed out when the victim Glenn Elg collapsed, right? Yes. It's so embarrassing. I mean, I used to be a cop. Just a little. When I came to, the restaurant was buzzing with police. And before I knew what was going on, they arrested me, sir. So between the time the victim collapsed and the time the police arrived on the scene, you have no idea what went on at Trabion. No, no idea at all. Why? Is it important, Mr. Wright? The other witness, the old man from the park, was pretty much chased out of the picture. Chased out of the picture? What do you mean? Old Sadie wasn't inside the restaurant because he was told to go call the police. Exactly. And you, Maggie, were unconscious. That means Mr. Armstrong was alone in the restaurant for a brief period of time. No! You don't think Mr. Armstrong set me up, do you? When you consider the facts, it's hard to imagine that Mr. Armstrong isn't involved in this at all. Ugh! <sighs> it's like the master biting into the paw of the dog that it feeds. Are you sure about this, Mr. Wright? Well, the old man said as much when we spoke with him earlier. I don't know. The things that the man says don't add up for some reason, sir. Maggie looks like she's trying to figure something out. We'd better find out exactly what happened to the old man on that day. Uh, show some evidence. I think we need to. Alright. <laughs> hey, dude! Ah, I feel much better after the trial this morning. I've been a bit of- I've been in, I've been a bit of a courtroom proceedings addict. That's what it says. Addict. Addict. Not addicted. I'm addicted to courtrooms. Just love them. Love the carpets. Smoke courtrooms every day. No, like, <laughs> I don't know. I've been a bit of a courtroom proceedings a addict for years now. Feels like forever since I saw a witness as slippery as that old man. He's not really that bad of an old man, though. Still... I feel a bit uneasy. Huh? Well, I thought you just said you felt much better. Maggie, if there's something on your mind, you've got to tell us. Especially if it has anything to do with Mr. Kudo or his testimony. Roger! I'll spill it all and see what you make of it! Thank you for not giving us a <laughs> dang... Blech. Back when I was an officer, Detective Gumshoe always looked out for me. But today? Today I was the one who had to try to look out for him, trying to incriminate me the whole time. You've got to remember, Maggie, Gumshoe's a detective. He's got a job to do. My old boss. I thought at least he'd be on my side. He's on your side! He'd do anything to help- You can't fool me! I saw him in the court today. I feel like a poor little baby woodpecker being pecked on the head by its own mother. Gumshoe's testimony was pretty solid. No wonder it hurt her so much. I hate him, sir. I mean it. I don't ever want to see him again. Ouch. I think I just saw Gumshoe's chances go down in flames like the Hindenburg. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's getting through to her that he really was trying to help. Well, show her the lunchbox. I, I will. No worries. Hey, what did you think of this cool guy? 
Blech. I know I used to be on the police force, sir. But I, I'm incarcerated now. So I can't use my connections to help you. All I can tell you about now is info about ex-cons or the clientele of Trabion, sir. Oh, don't let it get you down, Maggie. Hey, tell us about yourself. No matter what happens, I'll never let things get me down. You're always so positive, aren't you, Maggie? Macho Maggie bird, they say. The early bird catches the worm, a bird in the hand. Wow, all those phrases are named after you? <laughs> and I never turn my back on anything. You're always so strong, aren't you, Maggie? Macho Maggie bird, they say. I'm a tough old bird. Tough old bird, Nick. <laughs> Do you get it? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> oh, oh. Mr. Armstrong was very good to me after I was fired from the force. I can't believe someone as nice as him could have anything to do with this. Well, in the time between the victim being poisoned and the police being called, the only person who was on the scene and had a chance to do anything was Mr. Armstrong. There was no one else there. It was the tiger was hanging out in the kitchen, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> <laughs> y'all. He would not use y'all. Yo, I'm Yo. sorry. Yo, <laughs> yeah, not y'all. He's not southern. <laughs> hey, y'all, I'm the tiger. <laughs> the tiger. <laughs> I'm <Rawr>. the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Armstrong wouldn't... He wouldn't set me up. Would he? He might. Hey, do you know this creepy lady? I know I used to be on the police force and... But no, I don't. Holy smokes, that's him! Huh? That's your phony, Mr. Wright! Just look at that ridiculous suntan! Um, for the record, I'm not sunburned like an overdried tomato, so I don't know how. He told me he'd been in a, on a business trip to Hawaii, and that's where he got the tan. I'm not hearing this. <laughs> hey, do you know her? Oh, wait, probably not. No. Nope. I'm incarcerated. <laughs> yes, we know that. <laughs> um... <laughs> Wait, Aww. are you serious? You have nothing to say about the lunch that you <laughs> serve at the restaurant? <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe it's a new menu item from the uh, maybe January. Um, show off the... Uh... Uh, Maggie, you spilled a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, that's from when I was carrying a customer's breakfast over to them. The ketchup spot, you mean? My whole face was fire engine red thanks to that stuff. But you spilled the ketchup on your apron, didn't you? I don't see how... The ketchup-covered omelet went flying and hit the customer in the face. Oh, talk about a tomato red face! Makes me wish I could have seen it myself! Yeah, I guess. It was kind of a sight to behold. Which- who did it fly into? I don't know, it was a morning customer. Oh. Who would go there in the morning and eat tomatoes? Oh yeah! I've got something you're going to love. Really? What is it? A lunchbox, just for you. Here! Wow. Lunchbox? Weenies, too! I can't believe it! Thank you, sir! Did you make this just for me, Mr. Wright? Nah, I was Detective Gumshoe! Who else would make such a nice lunchbox for you? I thought oh, it was gonna say delicious. I thought for sure Pearl's theme was gonna play. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Detective Gumshoe? He's really worried about you. Looks like he put a lot of effort into making this, too. I can't accept it. Detention center rules. No gifts allowed, sir. Hey, come on, Maggie. Don't be like that. The rules are the rules. They'll lock you up if you break them. You're Some already locked Somehow up. when an ex-cop turned waitress says that, it seems a whole lot scarier. And anyway... I hate weenies! Oh. Really? It's all yours, Maya. You can enjoy it while with Mr. Wright. Oh, sure! <laughs> but... She's right. It's better than letting it go to waste. But, I guess so. Gumshoe's lunchbox eaten with Maya. <laughs> no, wait, so are they literally just sitting in front of Maggie? Like, oh, like, oh, oh god, you're so, so good. good. <laughs> yeah, basically. Well, how was it? That hit the spot. I love weenies. Oh, good. I'm glad I gave it to you then, sir. Well, that's sad. <laughs> ah, is that your attorney's badge? Actually, it's a fake. Holy smokes, that's it! Huh? That's the badge your phony had, Mr. Wright! You got duped by this?! <laughs> but it's a completely different color! And what about the fact that it's made of paper?! <laughs> you 
said the badge got a tan as well while he was in Hawaii on business. <laughs> I'm beginning to see how my phony was able to gain her trust. <laughs> oh, yes, dude. Uh, I, I was in Hawaii, got this huge tan. My badge got tan, too. Don't pay attention to the fact it's cardboard. It's cardboard. That makes sense. <gasps> wow. This is so bad. I know I used oh, come to on. be in the police. We were just talking about the fact that they <sighs> couldn't find this. <clears throat> All right. Let's actually talk to her about Victor's testimony. Oh. Is there anything about Mr. Kudo's testimony that stood out as odd to you? Actually, yes. The fact that he was even testifying to begin with doesn't quite... Doesn't quite what? Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table... It's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Yeah, we know that already. It was Victor Kudo. But I can't really say... It was an old man. Okay, then how about calling him a really old middle-aged man? No, age isn't the issue. The other customer was a woman. A woman? Are you sure, Maggie? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. So, what did this woman look like? Um, she was sort of creepy. I wonder who it was! And she had a cackling laugh. Indeed. Creepy. Cackling? Why do I get the feeling I've come across a woman like that before recently? It was Francisca Von Karma. Ugh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> no, you don't want Francisca Von Karma to eat there. She's like, this lobster sucks! sucks. <laughs> 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 it's not a lobster. It's inspired by, by lobster. <laughs> oh, this is great. It's Any not great. Anyhow, that's all the time we have for this episode. Really? Tune in next time. We'll be finishing up the investigation period, though. Fine. We can record that tonight. If okay, you want. okay. Have a great day, and God bless everybody.